episode number 206. And what I realized is that it's not so much about striking a balance. It's really about integrating the Mm. two and finding balance in that. So life is a part of business and business is a part of life. Welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Tutal and Hoff, where we talk about life, dreams, social media, and business. Well, hello, and welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis, Too Tall and Huff. Folks, I'm fired up today because after this show, you might realize that you can actually be making even more this next year than you are right now. And we're so pumped to have our featured guest today, Holly Chantel. Holly, hey. re- what's up, girl? Are you ready to be real? I am so ready to be real. Absolutely. Uh, my girl, Holly, has learned firsthand after successfully establishing herself as a business coach and a brand strategist. And uh, shoot, she's on track to hit over seven figures within her first five years, folks. And everything really changed for Holly when she started a family and she found out in a deep depression, unfortunately, you know, which we all kind of go through, you know, she was questioning what she wanted from life and what she wanted it from her business as we probably all go. And, you know, it, it, it was through a spiritual awakening that helped result her and helped her, you know, taking command of her life and looking at it in a whole new way as a mother, you know, it allows her to have even a bigger impact on her world. Obviously folks, all of us that know that as, as parents and Holly now is, it works with experienced service-based professionals. So these are folks that are doing stuff with services, uh, and and it helps them, you know, that, that they're finding a plateau folks. They're, they're seeing that, you know, they're not getting more, business. They're finding that they're tapped out maybe of the time that they have and they're just struggling with their business to grow. So Holly can come in and really help you not only to find out maybe where you're you're lacking, but also maybe help you grow, folks. So we're so excited to have you on the show today, Holly. First off, I want to say, how's your day going today? It's going fantastic. It's a beautiful day here. We have Nice snow. It's Lots gorgeous snow. in the trees. Oh yes, it's Literally, really. It's like a, I, I live in the woods, so it's really pretty. Oh wow! It's like that. It's like the ideal holiday scene that we've all. I seen. know. <laughs> Very yeah. white, white, white season. White Christmas season. That is cool. Yeah, absolutely. How fascinating. So, tell us a little bit more about your journey, as far as you know, when you decided in the, you know through your awakening, if you want to call it, yeah. that you need to look at life in a whole different way. And also how it's going to impact people in your business. Yeah, well, I think those that have become parents can really relate to the fact that your your entire outlook on your life changes when the little ones are introduced. And I have two boys. I have a girl on the way. Wow. And that, for me... You know, it was something that I'd been told, I'd expected, but until you're actually in it, I don't think you really know how much of an impact it's going to have. And for me, I fought it tooth and nail. (laughs) I am extremely independent. I'm a high achiever. I, you know, I, my business has been my dream since I was a kid. Like it was my entire life. So then when I start, I had kids and, and started to, to feel that pull in a different direction, it was so hard for me to adjust. Right. You and, had to change I mean, your mindset, right? You had to change Yeah. Your and, you know, I felt some of that in the first few months when you realize, okay, I don't have control of my time anymore. I, you know, am at the, the beck and call of this other being. And up until, you know, really just a couple years ago, so this is, you know, six or seven years total, mm-hmm. um, that I actually really came to terms with the fact, okay, <laughs> this isn't going to work anymore. I tried, I'm a problem solver. So I tried every which way to Sunday to be able to, you know, funk, try to function at the top level in both as a parent and a business owner. And what I realized is that, you know, you really, you, it's not so much about striking a balance. It's really about integrating the mm. two and finding balance in that. So life is a part of business and business is a part of life. And you can't be, constantly pulled in two different directions. And unfortunately, as you said, when you were introducing me, it took a pretty uh, drastic bout of depression um, mm-hmm. to really come to terms with that. I'm not someone that would ever even identify as being depressed before. And I had actually no idea that I was depressed until I was sitting on the floor and sitting on the floor with my kids playing and just had this fleeting thought of like, I don't want to be here anymore. Like I just wanted to escape. Right. And I realized that's not a normal thought <laughs> or that's not a healthy thought. It's probably a pretty normal thought. 
not a healthy thought. And that's when I got help and realized that I actually was depressed and that I had a lot of things to work through in order to be able to just function like at, at a, at a high level at all. Right. Um, so that's, that's what started that journey. And, and, uh, it's been pretty transformational the last few years. So did you get help with like a, like a psychologist? Did you actually have a yeah. therapy? Yeah. That's So amazing. I started going to therapy and here's, what's really interesting is uh, the therapist I chose who kind of was just the person closest to me. Um, he, we recognized, yes, you're depressed, you know, it's postpartum, very normal. Right. Right. Um, but he said, you know, what's really going on is he's like, you're going through a spiritual awakening. Mm. He's like, what your, 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 your being is reaching another level of awareness Wow! and you're walking through what's called the dark night of the soul. And that like, when he said that to me, it just resonated. So then I started doing all this research on dark night of the soul. And if you look it up, it's a, it's a very, it's a very common principle that people go through where it's like everything in your life is falling apart, no matter how much you, you problem solve and how much you, you know, do all the quote unquote right things, it seems like nothing works. Mm. And it's because you need to surrender, which is not a fun word. You need to surrender to what's happening and, and allow yourself to reach that next level of awareness, which sounds like, so like, okay, all I need to do is surrender. Check that box. Uh, <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> not that easy. No, it's not that no, easy. It's not. Uh, but once I recognized what the problem was is that it was okay. Like I'm upgrading you know, I, I've hit an upper limit and I'm upgrading. Right. I could, I could deal with that. And, um, you know, found a spiritual mentor to kind of walk me through that process of reconnecting with myself, my intuition, um, continued to see the therapist for a few weeks after that. And, um, like really made a quick recovery from, from that point, as far as the depression goes, it was kind of like, I just need to know what was going on. <laughs> right. Right. You already had it in you. You knew what was yeah. going on, but basically you maybe needed, like we all sometimes need just yeah. a little light put on that because we're not. Yeah. You need someone to just, you know, point it out. Like, like the, like you understand what all the symptoms are and kind of like in a vague idea what's going on, but just if someone could just put words to it and, and assign a name to the problem. Okay. I can, you know, I can work on that. I can, I can solve that. Right. So now let's talk about how uh, an entrepreneur, let's, let's say we're talking to an entrepreneur right now and they're saying, yep. you know what, Holly, man, I'm reaching my upper limits and you know what? My business, it's, it's getting kind of stuck at the five to 10 grand a month range, you know, which, Hey, that's not a bad business for someone out there that's doing this. That that's still a consistent business, but mm -hmm. how can they get it to the next level? What, what are some, what's something right now that's holding someone back from taking it to the next level? Yeah. So some of the things that I've talked about in my experience is now what I work on with business owners and what happens is, is when you start, so many service professionals, it kind of depends on what industry you're in, but I work with a lot of coaches, healers, gotcha. um, therapists, massage therapists, like people in the health industry, attorneys, gotcha. they have like this idea of this is how much I want to make in my business, or this is how much I need to make in order to leave my job, et cetera. And that's a very limited number. So when I started, that number was, you know, if I could just make $30,000, because you yes. know, being from Maine, uh, my alternative was to become a teacher, which is like a $20,000 a year job. And right. it's, it's terrible. So I said, you know, if I could just make $30,000, like I would be head and shoulders above my parents even. And like, that would be amazing. And in my first year I did 50. It's amazing. So that was just like this, it's, it's eye opening. What is possible as an entrepreneur? Awesome. But what happens is, is you have all these beliefs about, you know, what, what is possible, what's, what's comfortable, what's, um, what you deserve. Mm. And when you reach, you reach these thresholds, which are kind of like your upper limits. It's, it's, it's not just strategically, how do I multiply this or how do I scale this? There's a lot of internal upgrades that need to happen for you to allow yourself to do it. So we're talking about like surrendering, like there's, there's things that are in your subconscious mind that you don't realize are holding you back. So all of the things that you're doing might be the right things, but there's an energy behind it. There's words that are sneaking in that are turning away your audience. Mm. There's like, there's these really sneaky little nuances that you're not consciously aware of, but someone else can say, come in and say, okay, like here's the problem. And when you go through those upgrades, the, the 
change in your business is, is become, things become so much easier mm. and the, it's kind of like that barrier is no longer there anymore and you're allowed to move on and into the, the, the levels of business that you've been trying to. Do you think a lot of business owners hold themselves back, obviously, because they think that they're not worthy. They think they're not able, capable. Oh uh, gosh, imposter syndrome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, if I do this, what will people think of me? Right. Who am I to think that I could grow a seven figure business? Right. You know, I'm going to have to be one of those gurus and, and I don't want to be that person. Um, and there's just all of these beliefs that kind of come along with the big, the big hairy goals. And what you need to realize is that these are just ideas, beliefs. They're not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. And the assumptions that you're making is that you have to be like that, or you have to become that person that you don't really like um, or don't want to be seen as, and you don't have to, like you can do it in your own way and be, be real, be authentic. And the right people will be attracted to that. Yeah. So that, that, that's also getting back into your messaging. And I'm mm-hmm. curious, you say that there's some negative words that people are using or, or things that they're saying to their prospects or, or you know, to their potential prospects mm-hmm. or even current customers that are, are holding them back or maybe also maybe like pushing the other people away. Could you give our a little uh, customers maybe some insight? Maybe say, hey, don't say this. Just, just to <laughs> let them know, like, are you saying that to your customers? And if you are, maybe like find different words. Yeah. So I know this comes up a lot when people are raising their prices. Okay. Uh, That's, you know, once you've reached that level and you start to realize, okay, you know, I have the experience, I can't be charging the same price as I was two, three years ago. Right. But you go to start, you know, raising the prices is something that's probably a little bit more appropriate with your experience, but to you feels really expensive. Sure. Uh, There's so much energy behind that. So um, for instance, I'm working with someone right now and she charges, you know, a couple hundred dollars for like a month of, she does uh, spiritual coaching and I've worked with her before. She was actually one of the first people I worked with when I started on this journey a few years ago. And the, 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 the impact that she has on people is like, it's tr- profound, mm. but for her, the, the price that, that I, that she could appropriately totally charge feels enormous for her. Like a thousand bucks? No, like like she should be charging three to five thousand for Got you. the this package she has. So that's like twenty X what she's normally charging. Right. And what's what's funny is I told her, I said, you know, look at how much you've invested in me. Right. <laughs> you know? It's it's a lot. It's it's a lot. Like, why do you think that you can't charge comparable prices? Right. You have I have 10 years of experience in what I do. You have 20 years of experience in what you do. Right. And yes, you know, I am a business coach. So there's a kind of a different ROI and a different attitude toward that. Yeah. Maybe but, different audience too. Maybe kind of just right. in, in the But audience. the work she's doing and who she's working with, like the money that we're talking is, it's totally appropriate. She's working on with high level people. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, the, the, you know, I, like I said, I have a spiritual mentor and I, Um, you know, I, I pay comparable to what you'd pay for a business coach because she makes me upgrade. She makes me play a bigger game and she helps me break through these subconscious belief systems that I don't even know exist. And like every, like, it's just, it opens up a whole new world. Wow. That's fascinating. So really what it is, is figuring out what value that you're providing at the end for your customer. Yeah. And really, really owning the fact that you, you provide that much value. Right. I think that people think that because right. what they do is easy for them, yes. that it doesn't have a huge value to someone else. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs too are, some of us are in a rat race to the zero because yep. there's, you know, my business, I'll just be transparent folks. There's $99 social. Now, if you go check out $99 social, nothing against them, but you get what you pay for. And yep. so you're not getting a real tailored, localized social media campaign with actual people working to engage and get you comments back and get people in your doors. They are putting content on your social media for $99 and they're taking your credit card and swiping it. And it, it might be on your competitor's page too, the same stuff. But yep. the point is, I'm sure in your space and business coaching in spiritual coaching, I mean, I'm sure there's someone on Fiverr that does business coaching for five bucks. Right. I'm sure that some spiritual coach on Fiverr for 20 bucks or 50 bucks or 30 bucks. Or, and so 
it's like in some way it's so crazy because we are all competing, right? Mm -hmm. We are, but like the way you step, you know, differentiate yourself is based on your experience and the value you give the customer. Right. It's the level of sophistication of the service that you're right. offering. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so would you buy on Fiverr for five bucks for a business coach? You're going to get the value of five bucks. Right. And so it's fascinating to think that, but it's kind of true what you get for it. What you get is always what you pay for in this world, right? It's like for sure. It, it's for freaking sure. Uh, and then there's probably a fine line where like, it's like, okay, do I really need that? But then in that situation, I think that that's, that's kind of a whole different situation. You know, it's like when you're yeah. spending 50 grand on something and you don't know exactly the benefits of it. Okay. I get that. But for most people, if they're spending, you know, a few thousand dollars and it's going to help change your life, it's pretty makes sense. Right. Right. So if you're, if a listener is sitting here wondering, you know, where, where do I fall in this level of sophistication? Yeah. Uh, what I do with my clients is one of the first things we do is look at our competitors and gotcha. how I define a competitor is just what options do your clients have other than hiring you? Right. Cause sometimes competitors are not direct competitors. Like for instance, do it yourself is a competitor. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what you do is, is you look at, okay, you know, what, are the like what are the philosophies or the you know reasons why they do things certain ways? Um, how do you solve this problem? How is that different than the these other options? Uh, why do you do it that way? And when you start looking at those kinds of things versus the nuts and bolts, how many calls, um, you know, how many pages, how many words, like the the logistics of the work you do, right? And start looking at the you know your your philosophy your experience what that's taught you uh why you know this approach is better than that approach um for certain people it might not be across the board but you start to kind of suss out some of those nuances and you'll really start to see how valuable your services really are and how much you're really bringing to the table right. um and some of that imposter syndrome will start to kind of slough away when you when you really start owning the the kind of those gifts that you have. Right. It's you. If you're in a service-based business too, it's you. A lot right. of people are, are like my father, he's an accountant and he's built his practice up. He's got a team and staff and everything, you know, but they still come to see Ed. They still come to see my dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he is that professional. He has always served his customers, right? Even if it's made sacrifices on our family, et cetera, but that's just who he is. He's, he's right. the ultimate, you know, connoisseur of his customer. And, uh, and his business has changed and evolved many times because when you do serve your customer, there's going to be a lot of blessings in line for you, not just to mm -hmm. maybe do taxes, but maybe manage their trust one day. Maybe you're mm -hmm. doing bigger services for these people. And that's, I think, the, a bigger part of it too, right, Ollie, is that you, the services you might be providing for these people one day might even evolve over time as you become more of their ally or as, they, you know, I would say a companion or a coach or a mm -hmm. mentor, you know, the more they trust you, the more there's opportunity there for you. Right. And I mean, I feel like that's a, just a quality of an entrepreneur is that you're, you're constantly evolving. You're constantly creating yes. new ideas and you're going to want to go down new paths. And yeah, your, your, your business should kind of keep up with that personal growth that you're going through along with your clients. Um, you know, you're, you, all you need to do is stay, you know, a couple of steps ahead of them, which, you know, and, and, and kind of, create services based on what they're needing as you go. Right. Listening. Right. I would, I'm, right. I'm, we were in a social media management uh, business. And then all of a sudden one of my customers in February said, you need to start a reputation business and said, mm. we need you. We'll be your first customer and we need some sort of team or software or something. And so we were just like, Oh dude, we got to figure this out. And I'm not a coder or anything like that. We just partner with a great company Yep. You know, white labeled it for us. And so now we have a real time reputation, which is its own little thing. It's, it's starting to create some, some serious cash on its own. And the best part I personally love about it, folks, is that unlike social media management, where there's a lot of work involved, there's a lot of things, unknowns involved. Let's just put it that way. Unknowns. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if someone's going to blast your page in the middle of the night. And then all of a sudden you're having to, you know, be there, figure out a way to talk back to them, et cetera, et cetera. The software businesses is a lot more turnkey as far as like less work on us as a team and more work on the customer for them to manage their re reputation. So, but I was all honestly, Holly, that was all came from just me listening, you know, just yeah. listening to the customer and saying, you know what? 
Jim, you're absolutely right. I'm going to go get that thing started. I'm going to figure this out. I put a, a, you know, a couple months in the research process to find the right tools and at the right price points too, you know, to, that we could resell and then, uh, and then have just kind of, you know, grown it actually crazily just, just by the fact we have it, you know, um, and hopefully this next year we'll be even getting more, hopefully you never know. But the point is folks is that listening, I think is such a part, a big piece to this whole puzzle when you get these customers. Isn't it great when someone says, you know, you need to do this and I'll be your first customer. Right. It's, oh it's my like you're God. getting paid to test the idea. Absolutely, Holly. It blew my mind. I was like, this is the best thing That's that ever awesome. happened, you know, and it's not the same revenue as real time, our business, because we've, we've been doing it for 10 years, you know, and it's a different yeah. service, but there's a lot less team I have to hire. Let's just put it that way. It's not, I don't have to worry about the headaches of the team. As you know, you scale your business, you got more team involved, more people working, more, more uh, possible mistakes happening on your, on your, on your brand or a client. Yeah. Brand. Just added complexity. Oh yeah. Just add the more people that are, you know, you got going, there's more things happening, more, more, more movers and shaking. And, uh, but yeah, thank you for sharing this. I really think that, uh, those that are listening today, you know, obviously you need, you know, if you are in a situation where you're kind of stuck, I obviously using professionals like Holly to get you through those, you know, situations, I think is so vital. And, uh, but now we're about to take you into our top 10. Are you ready? I'm ready. Apple or Android? Apple. Netflix or YouTube? Ooh, that's hard. Uh, Depends on the mood, right? Yeah, YouTube, I can go down a rabbit hole for hours. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but we yeah. use Netflix a lot because we because the kids, they watch, they oh, binge watch all the you know wonderful shows. <laughs> absolutely. IG or Facebook? <laughs> Considering it took me a second to realize what IG was, let's say Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, Facebook, uh, Instagram, my bad. Uh, chicken or steak? Uh, steak. Laptop or smartphone? Laptop. Spotify or Pandora? Pandora. Movies or video games? Who? Uh, movies are, are, are what I do now. <laughs> right. I used to you, love video games when I had ha- time. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you, you, too many too many items in the fire at this point for video games because those can take a long. And time. I have to fight the kids for the TV. So right, right. <laughs> a movie I can watch on my phone. <laughs> Absolutely, reading books or listening to books. Ooh, right now I am an avid Audible subscriber because I don't have time to read. So yeah. I listen I while I'm listening. cooking and walking nice. around. My favorite thing too, folks, is just to listen to it twice. I listen mm-hmm. to the book twice because sometimes, you get, you know, like you said, you're doing all these different things. And if it's a book that really sticks to you, it's like, listen to it again because you really find these little, you, you, a lot of times you're hearing the same stuff, you know, so it's yep. kind of repeating that same stuff. But then a few little tidbits stick into you like, oh, I didn't remember hearing that the first time, you know, because yeah. obviously we're busy. Your mind's doing something else. Uh, but stocks or real estate, if you're investing, you got your mind on investing, what would you do? Real estate. Nice. And if you were on taking a vacation and you were to go, oh, would it be an ocean or a lake? Ooh, good question. Uh, when I go on vacation, I go to the ocean because I live like a half mile from the lake. Nice. nice. So, you <laughs> so got I'm at both. the lake all the time. Yeah, so vacation's like you go away. <laughs> Absolutely. Take me to the Bahamas. Let's go. I love it. That's so awesome. Do you think you'll ever retire? No. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I don't think I could most, retire. <laughs> most entrepreneurs love the, what they're doing, you know? So yeah. they, they, it's not, it's not work. There's really nothing to retire from. It's just like, this is, this yeah, is you're gonna I control am. your time. You get revenue. You can always grow the business. You can do whatever you can take a break and say, Hey, I'm going to take a, a month hiatus if you needed to, or you can always hire people, more people on your staff to take over more of your roles. There's so many things that you can do. It's amazing. And how do you typically like to start your day? You got two little ones and a one on the way. Yep. Do you, how do you, uh, do you have a routine? Do you, how do you typically start your day? So right now routine is a smoothie bowl and a cup of tea. Oh, nice. Okay. Sitting on the couch between the boys. Nice. The blankies. And that's, that's, you know, that's the, the calmest 15 minutes of the day. That's awesome. <laughs> Get that in and you're ready to go. Ready to yeah. go. Do you Even better if they're asleep and I get to do it like alone. That's Ooh, that, those nice. are like, I'm looking forward to, you know, the, the, years where they, you know, are not getting up at four thirty or five and yes. you can actually get up before them. <laughs> right. You're like, yes, this is gonna be the best be time. Fun. It's happened like three times in the last five years and it's been amazing. So I can't wait. <laughs> like, it's coming. It's coming, Holly. Your power hour, your power 15 minutes. That's all we need. That's all we exactly. need as parents. Do you have a skill you're uh, looking to master as we're coming in on the new year here? We're 2020. Yeah. So skill I want to master. Um, I am, what am I? I'm, 
It's funny. I've picked up a new hobby and I can't like, it's one of those things you can't remember what it is because it's so new. Um, what is the thing that I've been working? I'm like looking around, like, where is it? Uh, I've been, uh, I, I really want to learn how to model with clay. <laughs> Ooh, nice. That's <laughs> it awesome. It sounds really silly, but it, I, I bought all these modeling tools and I, I, you know, going to start taking some Udemy classes and, and figure sure. out. Sure. And YouTube, creative. obviously, right? YouTube, Udemy. There's oh, part. quilting. That's the other thing is I started quilting. Oh, awesome. I made a quilt. So I just finished it like a month ago. <laughs> nice. And how do you learn about quilting? Where do you, where, how do you get started to learn about that? Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely a trial and error kind of person. Got you. you like um, so I, kind of, I just looked up, you know, a, a picture on, on Pinterest and, and kind of saw, you know, how the grids worked and, and just started. That's awesome. <laughs> if you could sit down tonight and have dinner with anyone in the world and they're going to come to you in the beautiful New Hampshire area, who would it be? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know why, but the first person that came to mind is Jackie Chan. <laughs> nice. I love it. Hey, that's cool. And that's who your uh, inner soul wants to meet. Possibly. I guess so. That was, that was totally, I've, I love I've never Jackie thought Chan. that would come to mind, but now that I'm thinking about it, like he'd be a really cool person to hang out with. Oh yeah. I love those movies with him and Chris Rock too. I think that was, those are the best. Yeah. Was he it, just seems like a really interesting guy. Was it Rush Hour? I think it was called yeah, Rush, Rush Hour. Hour. Yeah, Rush Hour. Oh man. And I, on, and doing it on such a big level too, you know, uh, to, you know, coming from where he's come from to come to become such a huge star in America, I can only imagine. I know. I'm just I'm fascinated by like kung fu and kung fu, yeah. Just the the discipline and the the practice and the like precision is just fascinating to me. That's awesome. And if if people were to look for you and find more about you, where's the place place, uh, place for them to find you online or social? Uh, online and uh, websites. Uh, probably the best place to find me, hollychantel.com. I am on Facebook. That's probably the only social that I'm really active on. Gotcha. Um, and probably with your encouragement, I'll, I'll get into others. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. IG. I'm not IG. naturally very social, but in the last year, I've really started to kind of come out and, and do a lot more on Facebook. Um, and it's, it is a lot of fun, like once you get into it. And it can only impact you more, even if, exactly. you know, even if it's not necessarily right away. The, it's mm -hmm. the, it's the balls, the momentum is happening. It's another skill. And, and also just telling your story. I think more you tell yeah. your story about what you've gone through, it brings into more success for not only you, but for those that read the story and that, you know, can come to be inspired by that. So, yeah, I'm learning that a lot. And especially with clients that, you know, sharing just the ideas and the, and the things that you're going through is really, it really helps people. Oh yeah. It's game changing. Well, we want to thank you so much for your time today, Holly. I wish you many, many blessings in 2020 and beyond. And I think that you're going to continue to build and grow your practice and also help those that are you're providing service for. So we just want to thank you so much, folks. You've been hanging out with Holly Chantel and Travis Tutal and Huff. I want to thank you so much for your time today. And let's keep being real. This podcast is proudly sponsored by Real Time Reputation. Do you have results and reputation that you need to uncover and find out in your business? Do you need more reviews and positive reviews to be showcased on your website? Well, now's the time. Check out Real-Time Reputation on Google and let's get going. What another epic episode. And uh, if you enjoyed the episode today, can you please do me a favor and subscribe to our podcast, The Be Real Show on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform. And also take a little time today, if you don't mind, and give your boy T. Huff a review. I would really super appreciate it. And thank you so much for listening today.